You're listening to Rocket Night. I'm here with Rocket Night. It is August. What is today, anyway? Let's see if right. Okay, August 16th, so I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's August 16th, 2015, and I'm here in the tour bus with Mansion. I'm here with Mark Mansion and Sky Mansion. We're over at the Brass Mug in Tampa bay florida and uh, i've been actually following you on facebook for some time and i am dizzy from looking at your schedule that's why i wanted to talk to you about what life is on the road because i think i first started following you in the spring maybe and you were over in the netherlands because you had just been around amsterdam or whatever we actually already have a show booked for amsterdam in uh October, November, yeah. So November? we, yeah, yeah, we already have a book, a booked show. So have you played there before? Uh, yes, we played uh, three times in Amsterdam, actually. Already. So this is gonna be our fourth time. So, uh, your home base is Los Angeles, though, right? Right. Right. Uh, how long have you all been playing music as Mansion? Over a year. For her, yeah, she uh, actually longer. You've been uh, uh, since uh, been uh, January two thousand fourteen. Yeah, yeah. So she's been in the band for a year and a half. Uh, I'm the founder of the band. Mm-hmm. So uh, we started in uh, two thousand and eight. That was when uh, we put out the first uh, EP. And but we did take a three years hiatus. So mm-hmm. you know, basically we are back in action. It's been uh, two and a half years. Yeah, that we're okay. back in. Mark, where are you from originally in, in Sky? I, I was born in Italy, and yeah, I came to uh, Los Angeles about 14 years ago, almost 15 by now. Yeah. And you haven't been to Malta. <laughs> and that is the one place we haven't been yet, and I'm stressing but the yet. Because, be. Yes, we will. And we do tour in Italy as well, so Malta is just a, a ferry away from Italy, so we might actually make that happen. <laughs> My last name is really Tabone. Okay. You know, because I'm basically Maltese Italian, whatever yeah, you want to call it. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The sky, where are you from? I was born in Russia, uh, but I grew up in Ukraine. I moved to United States uh, like almost five years ago. Your English is perfect. Did you learn over there or did you learn here? Uh, here. Yeah. Now, were you a rock and roll girl back in your country? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> uh, so how did this come about? I met him in Hollywood, so and uh, he got this crazy idea. Me join the mansion. <laughs> uh, well, so <laughs> yeah, he accepted, and um, since been, then, uh, yeah, the best uh, bandmate I've ever had. <laughs> well, you're basically the manager in a sense. I, at least you do all the correspondence because I always talk to you. Uh, I, we have the manager, but uh, I handle a lot of booking right, and right. find the uh, support bands she's for us. A, she's a booking machine. She like, <laughs> she doesn't stop a second. I mean, most of the tours happen because of Sky. Mm-hmm. Like when it comes to the booking, she's the one that does all the hard lifting and, and actually uh, find booking agent but uh, find yeah. management and uh, yeah she's uh, she's really big on all the boring stuff that nobody wants to do yeah, yeah she I'm handles good that. to find sponsor yeah. yeah. well, so you're, you're good at social media I mean you're working and I can see that and uh, were you a model over in the Ukraine because you look like one yes I, yeah, I was, going to say. Yeah, I was a little bit uh, it right. uh, never was like the main thing for me. It's like a hobby. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so what, what did you do back home, basically? Just, just curious. <laughs> I had uh, my... Um, pu- I have an ad- investment properties, so uh, I have a few apartments ba- back in Ukraine. 
So you are a businesswoman. That's why she's good at she doing has all of this. a business degree, don't you? There you go. Yeah, yeah she's finance a degree. Finance, yeah. yeah. In you, fact, every time I'm spending too much, she's like, ah! No, that's not you guys are the perfect story. match. I mean, you've got the, the business end and the creative end. And, I mean, because we all know in music, it's a business, right? Yeah, I mean, um, honestly, we both, I, I would say we both handle both. Like, she's creative as well, uh, and I handle a lot of the business. Uh, we do different kind of things in the band. In a sense, like, she handles the booking, I do other things, I close the gigs, and I make uh, the whole ship go forward, uh, you know. And I, we try and be very creative also with the business side of it, because that's how you get to uh, be on the road, you know. If you just want to play your guitar, yeah, you can do that at home while you have a day job. But if you want to actually make this into a living situation, you have to be real smart, creative, and apply your uh, talent not just to the music but to the business side as well. Yeah. Business creativity, it's called. Yeah, yeah, Because, yeah. I mean, nowadays it seems it's, it's so lucrative. There's so much competition and there's, like, only so many venues. Yeah, and tough. you have to find a way to be different. And even with your music, I mean, you oh, have yeah. to find a way to be a little bit different. How would... How would you describe the, ty- your, the the genre? I mean, it's kind of all over the board, isn't uh, it? We call well, that uh, future rock. We call it future rock. Uh, in reality, there was uh, the goal that we have in music is to be original, mm-hmm. and uh, that might sound like uh, something you might heard before from other bands. But in reality, most bands don't aim to that at all. They just want to sound like their idols, and uh, and they do. They just sound exactly like their idols. So. We did not want to, uh, when I set up the band, uh, my goal was exactly that. And so I did not want to be uh, necessarily associated with any genre specifically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I came up with the uh, future rock for the reason. Simply not because I, you know, I'm trying to say we're going to be the future of rock. That would be pretty stuck up for me to say. But uh, it's more of uh, me saying we are not going to be um, tucked in in a genre with the other bands you know that we want to do what we want to do and well you mix a lot of kind of uh, electronica music right there's different influences yeah. within I mean there's yeah. metal it's, it's rock yeah. it's electronica Definitely. it's progressive kind of I yeah. mean what would you well that's the thing the thing is like I I mean uh, I'm, I'm the main songwriter and for me I, when it comes to drums for example I'm a mm-hmm. huge heavy metal guy um, you know so I love a lot of metal uh, also when it comes to the sound of the guitar but uh, vocals I'm not that much of a he- into heavy metal I'm more of a rock singer so yeah for me it's all about the melody I'm not into the whole screaming I mean uh, nothing against it I mean I can see why a lot of people like it but it doesn't really it's not my cup of tea so and I like also a lot of electronics. I, I love band like... Yes. Uh, Since we have uh, a keyboard, well, guitar yeah. in our case. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, we are actually developing the guitars a lot more. Like on this album, she still had a marginal role on the keyboard. But next mm-hmm. album that we are uh, going to make, uh, we finally are going to uh, record just with one guitar instead of two. And uh, the guitar is going to be featured a lot more. Because I really love a lot of bands like uh, Depeche Mode or uh, The Prodigy. I mean, I I love The Prodigy. To me, when I listen to Prodigy, it's almost like listening to metal. Like, so much energy. Yeah. And they do all that with scenes, you know. And I love also of, uh, bands like Nine Inch Nails or even Marilyn Manson, you know. that There's a lot of that. Uh, also, the whole gothic scene. I like all that stuff. So, I got my grunge 90s influence I got my heavy metal influence and you know the electro stuff and of course then I also the psychedelic side comes from uh, bands like Pink Floyd Um, Tool is a big influence the Mars Volta so I try to blend the whole thing to a big melting pot of uh, do you use an Ebo by chance I actually uh, have um in the first album, I used the Ebo a lot. That's something I picked up from uh, the Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, and then um, on the new album, I used it less because it's kind of a pain to use on stage. Because <laughs> I play the guitar and sing. Uh, so all the Ebo parts in this album are uh, in the play in the in the playback um, second guitar thing. Because we used to have a second guitarist, and then 
from when we decided to go forward with one guitar, mm -hmm. uh, for now we still have the second guitars in the playback because obviously we don't have a second guitar and we're not gonna get one. But uh, yeah, I love the E-Boy, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's just... Uh, what I try to do, which also I feel makes us original, I every instrument that I play, I try to not make it sound like that instrument. Like the bass in our, in our uh, band, uh, the writing of the bass, I call it lead bass. We don't have a rhythmic bass. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, the bass is like a second guitar, like a lead guitar. I just interviewed, I don't know if you're familiar with Stu Ham. He's yeah, a bassist. Yeah, he's I just, bassist. I interviewed him, and he basically, he, he'll play the Star Spangled Banner. He plays mm -hmm. melodies, whole songs, with the bass. I just feel that, yeah. I just feel when I hear uh, Ben and the bass players copying the guitar, it's like, seriously, I mean, I mean, 2015, why are you still doing that? What's mm -hmm. the point? For a little bit of low end? I just I just don't get it. I don't get why somebody want to do that. So, and when it comes to keyboard, like a lot of times people say, "Oh, I can't hear what the keyboards are doing because mm -hmm. the keyboards is basically for me are bass and guitar. Whenever I need mm -hmm. she's playing a lot of synths, doubling mm -hmm. uh the bass kind of like a second guitar or a lot of parts I run the the keyboard scenes through uh, um, a digital guitar rig so it's got the distortion from the amp with the delay basically the same rig that I have on the guitar I run it digitally on the keyboard so a lot of the sounds like there's this beautiful part in retrospection before the chorus and everybody thinks that it's either a bass or a guitar and it's the keyboard it's just, uh, but it's yeah. running through yeah. the guitar rig and so and the same thing again the drums for me drums are melody I am very specific at the way I, I write the drums I you know I study them like in detail because I like when the drums are actually adding melody and counter melody mm -hmm. and then when it comes to my instrument yeah when it comes to my <laughs> instrument on the guitar actually if you listen to the first album there are almost no power no chords at all on the guitar it was all lead all lead but riff lead so it's almost like I'm playing the bass on the guitar um, so there's all this kind of like inversion of the roles uh, into into the music and which I think so leads to the original it's really non-traditional and it's very complex I mean it's almost like when you're well that's what makes it progressive rock mm -hmm. yeah, kind of like really kind of jazz course, jazz yeah. or progressive rock where it is non-traditional even like because I do play the drums I mean uh -huh. there's certain parts where it's almost like punctuation to a right. sentence yeah there's you, a little bit of punctuation here yeah. and there but not overdoing it yeah and also the other thing uh, I I'm a pretty firm believer in uh, writer in writing by myself because I feel that so if even when I write, if I'm writing with other people, everything is so diluted. Like everything is so simple and it's not necessarily worse. It's just different. It's just more simplistic because you tend to just groove or rep be repetitive, you know, because you're jamming. But when you're writing by yourself, you know, it's like Mozart didn't, didn't ask the violin player to mm -hmm. write his part. He just wrote it because he had a vision and one person can follow the, the vision for me to find other people that have a similar vision so original to what I do it would be very 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 difficult vision and style as well. I have a I have a good friend who writes great music and then basically he finds other musicians to do it the way he envisions it but then he's finding that it's almost like they have to learn all the parts it, it's hard to find other people willing to do that. You know what well, I'm saying? It's almost like they're yeah. doing covers of your songs. Well, the reality is a little more complex than that. Uh, I got to this point. I didn't start there. I started just like everybody else, playing with other... The thing is, I think it comes down to a few things. Uh, one thing is commitment. Mm -hmm. uh, it is so difficult. The reason why you're asking how do we get to do what we do well that's because of the way I write because if I had to rely on a person as talented as they might be to write my bass parts or drum parts and then they're gone two months later because of you know people are have a hard time committing to anything mm -hmm. then we would keep starting again and again and again and I mean I've had uh, 16 different band members by now yeah. and that's for all sort of reasons that to me Every reason is really not the reason because there's only one reason why you do or you don't or you not do something. It's commitment. 
if you are commitment if you are committed to be a touring musician uh, whether you're comfortable or you're uncomfortable or you're broke or not you'll still do it well that's what I wanted to talk about you guys are real touring musicians you're in different cities different countries all the time I mean the lifestyles not for everybody yeah. yes I mean, yeah. and, and let's let's talk about that. What are some of the complications? I mean, even finding a way around or going from country to country. Let's talk about. Yeah, um, actually, just I just wanted to close on the other subject for a second. Just what I wanted to say is that I still hope that I will find people that are committed enough and understand, and they're willing to understand my vision. Because if I found a person committed to what we do and with a similar vision I'd be open to still ride with other people it's just uh, so far hasn't happened yet but it's not like I am close to it so that's that's plus you need to find people that are technically savvy enough that can do your music sounds pretty complicated yeah I mean uh, yes I agree with you I Mm -hmm. honestly it's not the the talent is really not not even the issue it's uh, it's people can play there's so many kids that can play their instrument but uh, the the personality and the the power of their mind usually is what's lacking. Like you know, like it's tough. It's tough to live on the road, and it's tough to be committed to something that is not. Everybody wants to com- to commit to something that is already perfect. And guess what? It, unless you are already some big artist, nobody's gonna get you to join Metallica if you are nobody. You know what I'm saying? You have to you have to earn it. People doesn't want yeah. people don't wanna earn it. They wanna jump on something ready and then they don't get nowhere and they wonder why, you know? You gotta work for it. <laughs> and actually I think it's main issue uh we are on tour non stop so it's really hard to find uh, right bam members who can commit to stay on the road for a year. Well and also get along with everybody. I mean yeah. you're in tight quarters. You know, and you have to, your personalities have to mesh, right? Yes, but again, the thing is, this is a job. This We make our living out of this. So no job is perfect. I mean, I, I don't think, I mean, I think every listener can, you know, agree to the fact that no matter the job that you have, you're going to have to deal with people working with you, right? Yes, the problem is musicians don't really look at music as a job they look at it as fun uh, time. as fun yeah. time and i have no problem with that if you want to have a fun time with music uh, get a job get a degree get a good job buy all the guitars that you want and just jam it home with your bodies when you're done yeah, right. then then music is going to be only fun but if mm-hmm. you want to make this a job then yeah there's going to be plenty of time actually the majority of the time where you're going to have to do shit that you don't want to do for that little time that you get to be on stage and that's I think it's that's for everybody is like that all the bands that are uh, ahead of us mm-hmm. I see they are busting their ass and that's the way it is you know you want to be spoiled and uh, you know you're never going to make it well you, I mean just the lifestyle itself you have to be physically fit I mean you're you're staying up late. You have to make sure probably that you eat right. Then you're like getting up oh, early, job. and you know, let's. What? How do you take <laughs> care of Italian for sure? Oh. He's gonna cook. You cook. You cook here in the. Oh, you oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have food set yeah. up, so I gotta say we. Uh, healthy. Yeah. No, we spoil ourselves with food. Like we eat fish, we eat steaks. I uh, we cook hot meals pretty much almost every day, and we have uh, like. Oh my gosh! Like I, I, I used to work in the restaurant actually, business for many years. Actually, we with food. If you we go are grocery, we we'll yeah. uh, We buy for, organic food. Yes. Uh, yeah, we buy fresh vegetables. No, we. Eat, I, I would say we eat healthier and tastier than most people at yes. home. Yeah, we we really, for for me, eating is one of the most important thing because when you're on the road. Mm-hmm. As you say, it is stressful. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't eat well or you don't sleep well. Yeah. Uh, three weeks later you're gonna break up with your, your band members because mm-hmm. it adds to the stress mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no for us and we both love eating Sky mm-hmm. she loves she wants dessert every time <laughs> no <laughs> but <laughs> nobody uh, believe me that I actually eat the same amount of food that the rest of the band mm-hmm. I'm like oh you're so skinny. she eats as much as we do yes yeah. I like um and we gain weight, but she doesn't. Yes. You're lucky. Yeah. I've seen your pictures. Like, <laughs> wow. I mean, like, I mean, that's why I knew you're a model. You're definitely a model. <laughs> but she's older, so she's older, so 
to Satan, I think. <laughs> no, in exchange no, no, no. for... Um, <laughs> I'm an angel, you remember? <laughs> yes, you are an angel. Well, how can you exercise if you're on the road? Okay, the our... Road actually, talking about comedian, our uh, drummer, mm-hmm. uh, Link, uh, he loves working out. Okay. And he will work out anywhere. Yeah. Like seriously. in the sun in a Walmart pan- parking lot. I, we have <laughs> seen him working out. Yes, in the Walmart parking lot with 350 million degrees. And you know, if you again, like as I was saying before, when you are committed to something, right. you will find a way to do it. You will do it. Mm-hmm. So no, he he works out all the way. We actually have uh, weights mm-hmm. here, and we have all the like. Um, and abs too. Yeah. Some squats, yeah. Try to. Yeah, and the tour bus opens up. This actually slides out. This oh, slide okay. out. Uh, we are in the tour bus for people that yeah. can't see us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and actually, we even. Uh, put an entire drum kit in every year so senior, once we open up so actually we, we get to have quite <laughs> yeah when it's just the four of us uh, with no other bands touring with us uh, there's a lot of space we get to work out I don't get to work out because I'm always working <laughs> the business end but uh, yeah you can stay healthy I mean at the end of the day I think we, this is a hell of a job that we have uh, we, it's like most people's dream job uh, well it is it is most people dream job because they don't know what it they don't know what it takes to yes, make to keep like this alive like we uh, got one drummer for um, in in a big time he quit on us because he said uh, i feel uncomfortable to sleep in a couch <laughs> so picky this wasn't his dream yeah <laughs> you know you want to be a touring musician uh, and you have a problem. The other problem is like, oh, I, I, I'm not accustomed to showering every other day. Because, you know, we shower every other day. We can't shower every day because... And it's like, I'm like, seriously, you want to be a drummer? And you want to... You know, yeah, it's just... a musician. Uh-huh. It's like, I always say, if you tell a person, would you like to be rich? Right. They will say yes, right? But if you tell that person what it's going to take of them to become rich, they will say, oh, fuck that. Exactly. I'll, you know, I'll be poor. And that's the same thing with the band. Every If you ask somebody, you want to be in a band, tour the world, this and that. Oh, that's like, yeah, that's my dream. Then you tell them what it takes to mm-hmm. make that happen. They're like, ah, I'm out of here, you know. Yeah, like probably a lot of the time you're just spent driving or sitting around airports probably, waiting around, yes. hauling luggage. I mean, people see the pictures and magazines of the rock stars on stage yeah. and the, the adoring fans but they don't understand all the the, yeah. the piddly crap stuff that goes some with ridiculous it. band members we had this girl in the band before oh my god and she like had pretty much zero experience it's like complaining that uh you know she had to sell merch it's like oh really it's like what what do you expect i mean what do you expect like do you you know People have really such weird expectations and they just don't uh, want to put in the work. And then guess what? Uh, we travel the world and they're home. I mean, this year, this is in 2015, this is our second coast to coast in the United States. And we have, uh, we were three months ago in Venice, we were in London, Amsterdam, Rome, Naples, we have done Seattle, Los Angeles, uh, Austin, We've been, we, are, we have been in Canada, in we are in Orlando. We have swam this year in um, in bodies of water everywhere in the United States north, south, west, east <laughs> really we have done the lakes I've up seen, there I've seen the pictures on Facebook all the way <laughs> we were on the gondola in Venice uh, you know in Naples in the ocean on the Vesuvio vo- volcano I mean we have a hell of a life for these small moments that we get to enjoy mm-hmm. and then there's a lot of work I would say 80% mm-hmm. is work and 20% is enjoyment but uh I think the secret is enjoying the little things. Like sometimes we're just driving or we're just parked somewhere and it's nothing special, but um, you know, I don't know. Like you, this you go for a grounds that we stayed a few days ago, it was like a crazy rain and we swam, you know, a really warm, like bathtub of mm-hmm. water mm-hmm. and the, like uh, this uh, crazy. Uh, Called rain mm-hmm. and fallen stars, like we saw like it was amazing. Ten like we were in, uh, in one night. We were close to seaside in Florida, Hello. and so we were in this camping lot and camping um, campground because uh, we had a few days off, and um, it had a private beach, 
uh, which I never seen a campground with a private beach, by the way. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. And so we were in the water, and the water is just beautiful. And there was nobody because it's a small private beach, right? And then the it started raining. And but the rain was cold, but the water was so warm, so we yeah, jumped yeah. back in the water. So we were in the water with this beautiful uh, look because there was the city on the other side of the ocean it was really strange, and the rain was coming on us, and it was, it was just one of those and things. All the stars, yeah. And then later at night, uh, I think it was like 3 a.m., and we went and they had this little uh, like a pier, like mm-hmm. a small pier, and we were there, and there were like all these huge falling stars. I've never seen falling stars that big, and you know. Those are the things, the magical moments that we get to, you know, cherish for the rest of our lives. And for me, uh, having to spend eight hours a day on the laptop booking and doing all this boring shit, it's mm-hmm. still worth it because of those special Plus moments. all these people that we see, like all these friends all over the world that we have. Uh, that, uh, like in uh, in the United States, we have tour bus, so we're kind of comfortable. But in Europe, uh, we, uh, we uh, pretty often stay with friends. Well, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, it's just when. So we uh, always get spoiled by mm-hmm. our friends there. Yeah, yeah, our yeah, fans are awesome. Yes, I mean, uh, always. We have some, some of our fans are so, so generous, you know, like we are always, uh, because we don't, take that for granted you know what I mean and we meet all these people and they owe us nothing you know sometimes people that we have never met like like you we never met you in person but you know we've been in touch on Facebook right, right, right. and then you just have uh, they just open their house to you they'll mm-hmm. cook for you we were just playing in Orlando yes and uh, Imani she um, the lady Promoter, that booked us yeah. she maybe your friend with her I don't she, know. she just friended me and oh, she's she into the metal scene so yeah. I'm definitely gonna friend her back she had us over at her yeah. place yeah. and we were swimming in her pool and she made us this delicious barbecue, pasta yes, barbecue you, yes. and it, you know it's just very touching for us because uh, again I mean we feel like we are a very small band we we are touring all around the world but we are far from being famous and and regardless, even if we were, I don't feel like just because you're a celebrity or you're famous, anybody owes you anything. And to see how generous people are, it really, really is touching. So the human factor of uh, being on the road, mm-hmm. it's really big for us. It really makes us uh, feel alive and make us feel all alone, you know. Do you guys keep diaries or journals or anything like that? Here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, it's sort of, uh, I mean, really, we, we, we don't have even the time to do that. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I feel Facebook, that's one thing that Facebook is really good yeah, at. Thanks. I mean, uh, it really is a diary of uh, everything. And, I mean, again, uh, maybe, you know, five, ten years down the road, you know, if we break big enough where people actually care to hear the story then uh, it'll, it'll be time for putting out a book or a diary or something well you, know? you still could write about life on the road i mean everybody wonders what is it like to be in the rock business right. and they see all this glamour and movies etc they don't know what it's really like or what it takes to get to that point yeah and you know times have changed uh and there's so much ignorance and false information on the internet uh, I think that's part of the problem. I feel all these uh, music schools that they sell this this dream. There's a lot of people that make profit out of the BS that they give to musicians. So, I mean, I've been in Hollywood for many years. I have the musician school, like, you know. And it's like every year hundreds and hundreds of kids come out of this school that paid, some of them paid seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 to get a degree and I tell them dude seriously buy stocks man forget about it go on YouTube and learn how to play drums yourself and you know you're gonna need some money to become a musician you don't need to have a freaking degree and it's just like they come out of there with all these wrong ideas because they just it's not the reality there's so many kids out there with skills and so little work I mean honestly everything that we got in the industry even myself as a producer because I produce a lot of bands and I produce you know the callings I work uh, with Alice Cooper so you do all the sound engineering and uh, stuff like that too yeah I mean not anymore right now because I'm always on tour but Mm -hmm. up until we got on the road full time I produced uh, a lot of artists and uh, our record I recorded completely myself even uh, the song with Fred Durst and uh, you know it's just uh, everything that I got 
that I accomplished through uh, in the music industry is because I was creative and I was looking for my own avenues. I, you know, nobody hired me as a sound engineer or as a producer in a studio. I opened my own studio. I, instead of going to school, I bought gear. Uh, mm-hmm. ins- you know, I downloaded digital books on the internet and studied how to do the stuff. You know, you don't need a school to brainwash you to justify the fact that they're charging you $80,000 to learn a job that, that has really almost no chances of success. It's funny you mention that. I'm kind of like smiling because I used to actually, I used to teach at an art school, but science, believe it or not. And all these kids were there studying to be like video game, you know, creators and filmmakers and all this. And they just graduate with, like you said, $70,000 worth of loan and loans. And then they're working at GameStop, yeah. you know, yeah. they're working at... Uh, Lowe's, <laughs> yeah, Home Depot, yeah, it's just such a and it's, a it's it's they take advantage and they're trying to sell a dream. And people, you know what? Because they look for the shortcut. People look for a shortcut, and I mean, and there's that, and there's the ignorance, and there's the false information. I mean, obviously, I I, I mean, I'm not gonna blame kids for having a dream, but. Uh, yeah, you gotta be a little smart. I mean, you or hopefully your parents, somebody to suggest. Yeah, at the end of the day, I don't think Jimi Hendrix went to a music school, did he? I don't think Led Zeppelin did. I don't think Kurt Cobain did. I mean, who? No. You know what I'm saying? Who yeah. did that? Exactly. You know, I I never studied guitar. I mean, I, I never did. And uh, somebody's like, "Hey, you suck." No, I don't suck. But uh, I never studied guitar. That's probably why. I am original on the guitar, you know, I mean, if I, um, I went to school for, uh, I actually did do a music school back in Italy for singing, I hate, mm-hmm. I hated every moment of it, because Why? they wanted to teach me Theory. some, no, no, I, I study all of that okay. by myself too, I, I, I like all this stuff, um, but they're just trying to make me sound just like everybody else, and it's like, basically when you go to a school, you learn to be just like everybody else. You learn to be the session man, the session girl. That doesn't exist anymore because there's no record budgets. There's no record budgets. No one's going to hire you. I mean, come on, kids. I mean, really, like, it's such a lack of understanding of what's going on. And, you know, I just, I, I feel sad because, I, I mean, living in Hollywood for... 14 years I've seen so many kids they come to Los Angeles from all over the United States from all of Europe and they all have the dream and their dreams get shattered really fast and they get stuck in a restaurant job or in a whatever job a guitar center and they all think they're gonna go there and do this and that and it's almost like winning it's like winning the lottery there's that one case that yes it happened uh, you know but what does work is be smart talk to people be creative and do your own thing because that's what you're listening to rock at night
find out more about the mansion at their website, www.themansion.com, T-H-E-M-A-E-N-S-I-O-N.com. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the intro melody. It's called Get On Down by Billy Bass Alford. Thanks. <laughs>